Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at uh, an amplifier that a viewer of the channel and a Facebook friend sent in. Uh, this is out of a Magnavox suitcase record player. Uh, looks to be around 1968 to 1970. And uh, the complaint is, is that this has an annoying amount of hiss and noise in one channel. And that does not change regardless of volume or anything like that. And if we take a look here, he's done a fairly good job of recapping the unit. Uh, really decent Nishikon and United Chemicon caps here. If we take a look underneath, all the solder works nice and pretty. Did a good job. Uh, but the caps did not fix the problem with the noise. So we're going to hook it up so that you can see what the noise looks like and maybe attach a speaker so you can hear what it looks like. And then we'll go about troubleshooting what's wrong. Okay, so we got it all plugged in. I've got my speakers wired up here, scope ground wired up. There's no signal input right now. And if we go over to the scope here, we can see that one channel has our noise. If we go up in sensitivity a little bit, we can see that that noise is definitely present. And let's get a speaker hooked up so that you can hear that noise. All right, so here's what the noise sounds like. It's pretty much white noise. And it does not change regardless of whether you adjust the tone or the balance or anything. So, normally when this happens, if it's volume independent, meaning I can turn the volume all the way down and it's still there, uh, it's usually either the last stage of the preamp or it's the first stage of the amplifier right before the Class A device is here. And you can use a signal tracer or you can use a scope. Uh, we're going to use the quiet channel on the scope here, which is going to be our right channel. And I'm going to start probing. First we'll do the final stage of the preamp here. So. I'm going to do the final stage of the preamp. It's on the collector of both left and right channels. That's the emitter. That's one channel. That's the emitter of another channel. So that ain't it. Uh, and we can go to these output capacitors here and not see it. Alright, so let's go to the input on the power amp. Don't see it here on either capacitor on the input of the power amp. I'm, I'm looking right here, right where these, where these come in. Still no noise yet. So we're going to go to the uh, first gain stage. That's on the base of one channel. That's on the base of another channel. Now we start to see a problem here. Let me magnify. There's times 10. There's some noise there. All right. So it's evidently in this channel here because other than the output, they don't tell you which is which. So now we're going to go, since we saw junk here on the collector of this first device here which is where our noise starts let's go to the base or the collector of the second device this is uh goes into the class a here and we can see that even on times 10 the noise is much louder so that leads me to believe that the noise is originating here and amplified here and then goes to the output so let's grab some freeze mist real quick and see if freezing this guy changes its behavior. Okay, so I got my can of freeze spray here. R134A is all this really is. And I'm going to shoot this guy here, which uh, I believe to be the originator of the noise. And as I spray this, we're going to watch the scope. Amplitude starts to go down. You hear the noise getting a little quieter. 
Okay. Now just for grins and giggles, let's shoot the one next to it that's amplifying the noise. That changed it a lot. Interesting. Okay, so change of hypothesis here. Since this is the one of most sensitivity, and the base of that one is co coupled to the collector of Q203, that tends to tell me that this is actually the leaky guy. Because if I put my finger on this and warm it up, we can see the noise starts to get louder. Whereas if I do the first one I looked at, there's no change. But that one definitely makes it louder if I heat it up. And then again, if I freeze this guy, that makes the noise go down. Okay, so this guy's got to come out. So let's go ahead and get it desoldered. Okay, shed a little light on this. And yeah, let's go ahead and remove this device. Actually, let's make sure I'm doing the right one. I think it's actually this one here. Yep, it's Q204, because Q203 is the first one I checked. And let's solder back the one I took loose. Okie dokie. Flip this over. And we'll go ahead and remove this device. Hard to see what that is. It's pretty obliterated. But I'll tell you what I have used with uh, good results. So what I've been using are these Russian uh, MP20s. These tend to work really well on these circuits. I don't know what it is. But uh, the MP20s just tend to work. So what I'm going to do is pop this guy in here. Assuming I can get my hands to function this morning. Okie dokie, I'll push this down in there. Package is a little bit bigger than the original, so just be aware of that. And let me solder it in. We'll clip it off. Okay. Come on now. Time to get a new pair of diagonal cutters. Those are getting a little tired. All right. So we got that all situated. Let me go ahead and hook everything back up. And then we'll power on. First, let me find my scope probe. Hook this back up. Bear with me a second here. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to apply power. And we can see now that there's no more noise. It's uh, pretty good looking. So let's get a signal hooked up to it. I'm going to need some more clip leads and then we'll go from there. Okay, so now we got everything hooked up, our signal, and we can see that we have a bit of a channel disparity. That 
channel disparity seems to be equal through all parts of the volume control. There's our clip out there, which occurs a little bit sooner than the other side. Of course, that balance control is pretty touchy. We'll see what happens when we even it out. All right, so they clip at about the same point. If I overlay them, it looks pretty good. So balance control, you got to tilt to about 11.30 for it to be proper. Just crank it all the way up there. The left channel symmetrical clipping, the right's a little off. I'm not going to worry about it. It's only like a quarter of a watt difference. So let's see. Uh, you can see the built-in EQ curve there that occurs. A little more bass, a little more treble at mid bass. They or uh, mid range, they just kind of knock down a little bit. It's all meant to go together. So at one kilohertz, let's see how much power she puts out. All right, so that's going to be five volts RMS. Square it. That's twenty-five divided by three, or excuse me, divided by eight, which is the load, and uh, you're going to get about three and a half watts per channel. Uh, which that's to be expected three and a half watts for that little tiny transformer and stuff uh, And if we go down That's it just before clipping if we go all the way down and we crank up the sensitivity We see that other than just a little tiniest bit of hum That's pretty good that's about what I'm used to seeing from that. So three and a half watts per channel. Both channels work. No scary noise no more. Let's just feel this. Uh, this is still ice cold. And the amount of hum there is very acceptable. So uh, I think this thing's done. So that was pretty straightforward, actually. I was kind of happy about that. Uh, the recap job he already did, he just had to take care of that noisy transistor. And uh, it's a happy machine now. You crank it up, get two channels, nice and clean. So yeah, yeah, I know the bench is a mess. I just, this was my morning project before everything else. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, more stuff to come.